here we come to the centre section of the console. We have uh, the eight track meters, which can be selected, uh, can be sourced from the eight tracks, the auxes, the externals of the control room uh, monitors. We have uh, two track main output meters. Uh, we have the four stereo reverb returns, augs masters, and the eight track groups and the group faders. Above here we have the um, services for the console which are signal presence and oscillator and pink noise generation. Two stereo cue mixers, uh, some master controls to set the master functions for the console, some hard routing buttons. And coming down here we have the monitor section and we have the door control plus the control for the EQ and dynamics for the console. And lastly we have the transport control and the keyboard of project management. These are the 8-track meters in the monitor section. They can be sourced from the 8-track outputs, the AUGS outputs, the external inputs to the monitor or the control room monitor. Below the 8-track meters we can see that 8-track 1 and 2 are routed to the main mix bus. So this would be typically for stereo group returns. Along with this, we have a signal indication of either signal presence or overload. Below this, we have a routing indication of the reverb returns to the main mix or to the eight tracks. Moving over to the right hand side of the main monitor meter, we can see the main two track meter. This can be sourced from the main mix, the control room, the two track mixer or the cues. Below the two track meters, we have the, the PSU status monitor. A lot of consoles and a lot of gear have just LEDs lit for when the power is, uh, is good. However, this is a hidden till lit system where if you have a PSU failure, it will light to draw your attention to it. There are two buttons also above the master meter selectors, which we've already discussed. One indicator is for door when the door meters are being displayed across the main meters. The second indicator is a solo indicator which clearly shows you when you have a solo button selected. Lastly we have the talkback microphone and the USB port. This is useful for when you want to load and store your set console setups using a USB stick or to do software updates. Below the main meters, we have four stereo reverb returns. These have a level control for their input and can also be used to control door functions. We have a level control to send the reverbs to the cue mixes so that the level of the reverb can be altered in the headphone for the artist. We also have a width control which can be altered to narrow or to wide and also has an in and out selection. Depending on whether the reverb is in mono or stereo, we have a pan and balance control with an in and out. The mono button is used to mono up the reverb return. This button switches the reverb return on or off. This button is the ISO button, which isolates the reverb return from the solo system. And below that is the AFL button. Here we have the AUGS masters for the AUGS buses and in this section we have the main mix insert with in and out selection and also pre-post selection. Above the main mix insert we have the IMR control. This will blend the main mix with the insert return which also has an on and off control. When you put a, a compressor say on, a, on the main bus you hear the whole of the compressor. But if you don't want that, if you want a very subtle effect where you want a little bit of the compressor's being hit by the main bus and you might want to really crank it up, but you want to hear quite a lot of the main mix with that little effect of the, the compressor being really squashing and you can hear it in it, you know, and that's what the, the blender does. On the front of the console, we have a headphone socket which is fed from the headphone level control. This level control can be sourced from the control room monitor, the externals, Q1 or Q2. This section here is the 8-track masters with the 8-track faders. 
On the 8-track masters, we have a pan control, which adjusts the level onto the main mix bus. We also have some sends to the AUGs 1 and 2 and AUGs 5 and 6, along with a pan control. For example, I could use 8-track 1 and 8-track 2 as a stereo drum group, with the pans feeding the left and the right mix bus, and these controls here feeding a stereo reverb. I can also insert an outboard stereo compressor like the Neve 33609 across the stereo drum group and make it pre or post. Lastly, we have an ISO button to be able to isolate the 8-track group from the solo system. Along with the 8-track section, we have the 8-track faders which are motorised and touch sensitive and we also have a cut and solo system individually tailored for the 8-track system. While we're talking about the 8-track groups, we also have a 2-track mixer which can be fed from the 8-tracks, from the which is completely separate from the main mix bus. This, this mixer can be conformed in two ways, either in group mode or in 5.1 mode. The contributions onto the 2-track mixer can be selected on and off and they have individual levels. Also, the two-track output can be controlled on and off, and also the main two-track mix output has a an output control as well. Lastly, the feed to the two-track mixer can either be pre-fade or post-fade. Another example of how you could use the two-track mixer is that your main mix could have the complete mix of the song, and then you could individually tailor a two-track mix output, which could be your backing tracks. At the top of the monitor section, we have a signal presence sensitivity control, which will alter the sensitivity of the signal LEDs on the channels and on the eight tracks. We have an RTB control for return talkback. And here we have the services, which has an oscillator level control, frequency selection, and also the press of this button, put the oscillator into calibrate, or we can send pink noise to the channels, the eight tracks, the two track mixes or the loudspeakers. Below the console surfaces, we have the meter selections for the channel meters, channel input, door send and door return. For the eight track meters, you can see the eight tracks, the auxes, the externals or the 5.1 control room. And the two track meters, you can see the mix, the stereo control room, the stereo two track and the Q1 and 2. The console has two stereo Q mixes or headphone mixes. These can be sourced from the externals, from the main mix or the control room monitor, or from the AUGs buses. Also, there's a simple EQ control. It's a fixed frequency of about 1.2K and it gives you plus or minus 4 dB either side so it's brightening up and decreasing the base a balance control and an output level control this is the master select section which handles the global controls for the channels we have selection of mic input line input and door on the channel input and we can also select the door send and return and input to to the monitor. We can also override these master functions locally on each channel. Also we have master swap which will swap the main fader with the monitor pot on a console basis and we also have master mix. It basically sets the console into a mix function as opposed to record function. It selects the channel input to door, return and also the monitor to door return as well. Puts on input too. So you're now ready to bring your tracks back into the console for playback from the door. This is the master solo system. We're in destructive solo mode at the moment, but if I select this button, it will give me after fade listen. We can also set the mode of the buttons to being latch or interlock or momentary. We can also reset the solo system and we can also link the solo system so that the channels and the 
monitors are linked together when doing large mixes. This is the manual routing selector. At the top here, we have functional buttons for loadings and saving and filing stores. Selection of the load button brings up the filing screen, which allows us to load console setups. Pressing the save button allows us to store the current console setup. Selection of the root cell button allows us to quickly route the eight tracks or the main mix outputs from the channels. For example, eight track one and eight track two are routed from channels one to nine. So we can navigate between channels and choose which routing we want to the eight tracks or the main mix buses. So on the right hand side of the screen here, you can see we can route the eight tracks to the main mix buses, or we can route the reverb returns to the main mix buses, or we can route the reverb returns to the eight track buses. So we have uh, buttons here, which is all channels to the main mix or all channels to the mon mix and you've got uh, all clear as well. This is the main control room monitor for the console. It can be sourced from internal or external sources, but let's talk about the internals first. This can be sent from the auxiliaries or from the Q mixes or from the main mix. We can also monitor the two track mixer which is fed from the eight track faders. And we also have an eight track button. So if I go onto the screen and select settings, I have a matrix here, which will allow me to select any of the eight track outputs to any of the loudspeakers in the 5.1 monitor. Once this has been achieved, simply selecting the eight track button will then bring up this matrix selection. The control room monitor can also be sourced from external inputs. There are four external inputs, two 5.1s and two stereos, with the added addition of a digital 5.1 input. Sum allows you to sum multiple sources together. Insert allows you to select a 5.1 insert across the monitor. The stereo button will reduce the 5.1 monitor to stereo for stereo checking. And we also have a phase left button, which will allow you to phase reverse the left channel to check out microphone placement. We have an AFL PFL indication along with a PFL button to select PFL from the channels. The solo in front button allows you to blend the selected channel solo along with the control room monitor source. The control room monitor has four sets of loudspeakers, two 5.1 sets and two stereo sets. Now the control room monitor is selected to the A set of loudspeakers. We can now select prefade listen or RTB to the M2 set of loudspeakers that are not being used. The swap button allows you to bring the rear loudspeakers to the front loudspeakers to be able to better balance the 5.1 surround. The level control can be used to control the main monitor loudspeakers or set the dim level or set the after fade listen level, the pre fade listen level or the blend of solo in front between the main mix and the control room monitor source. In a post production environment, setting the monitor level to minus 15 star and then setting the loudspeakers to 85 dB will be able to get you back quickly to your reference point. The control room monitor section has six individual cuts and a master cut. The six individual cuts can be set in sets of groups. And also, not only with cut, we have dim and mono. Within the talkback section, there are four controls talk to Q1, talk to Q2, slate, talkback output which is an individual output. Below the four controls is a red light button for external red light and talkback all button selects Q1, Q2 and the talkback out together. Mm -hmm.